Namaste. Um, so I'm Faith Sternleaf. I am from Colorado State University, as Melinda mentioned. Um, we are um, part of the Secondary Cities Project, but more as a technical support. I'm going to be talking um, about one of our projects today, not that I've been there, but um, just looking at some of the data. So as we move um, from uh, year one and year two, we're moving into year three, starting in October, and we've really um, kind of moved with our, our goals and our objectives, um, accumulating our goals and objectives. So year one, as Melinda mentioned, we focused on emergency preparedness, human security, and um, resilience, that funny word that we always come up against. Um, in year two, we really focused on the water, food, energy nexus. And year three, we're focusing on both of those components, um, but um, as a you know as a package. So we're really looking at the sustainability, not just the sustainability of the secondary cities initiative, but also the, uh, the sustainability of the projects and um, and looking you know more globally at at global sustainability. The Sustainable Development Goals, this is what I'm referring to, are now driving global efforts um, to make human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable through SDG 11. Who's heard of SDGs, specifically SDG 11? Really important for secondary cities. This is, was a huge accomplishment to get um, urban, urban, um, the urban agenda as part of the SDGs. So within the SDG, there is a call for spatial data, which is really, really exciting. I'm not jumping up and down for joy, but this is a huge development. Um, that makes up what we're doing extremely relevant. Um, and it has been driven by the data revolution, and some would say here that OSM has driven that data revolution. There are two SDG 11 targets that call for spat spatial data. For each target, there's an indicator that provides guidance on how to achieve that target. In order to achieve targets 11.3 and 11.7, the Sustainable Development Solution Network is a committee that is implementing urban SDGs, and they came up with uh, two different calculations. And so for target 11.3, that calculation is the ratio of land consumption rates to population growth, and for 11.7, that calculation is the average share of built up area of cities that is open space for public use. So the challenge I pose here today to you is what can we do as an open data community to generate reliable, accessible, and useful new data for inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable secondary cities? And we all just learned what secondary cities are and human settlements. And there are some human settlements that may be considered as secondary cities, is what we're finding out now. What we have found is that the global data and open source data initiatives are important for secondary cities because in many cases, that is the only available data. So that is the only available data. This is when we were um, searching, when we started this project and we started searching for data for these secondary cities, we couldn't find anything. So we went to the global data sets, WorldPop, um, you know, just a, a number of SRTM, phys both physical and human geography data sets. These data are helpful because they give us a starting point and they show us what to look for in terms of data gaps and data needs for each of these cities. So now I'm going to take you on a little trip. Um, I think we need to push play. Yes, please, thank you. I'm going to take you to Africa. Let's see if I get started. Will you, um, will you um, get out of the PowerPoint and then maybe push play? See if it will work. It doesn't need the internet. No. It's not there. It's 
This is a this is actually a perfect case in point that um, that we um, we need all kinds of tools and technologies um, in order to demonstrate our visualizations, in order to demonstrate our data. Um, and so I will show you. Um, uh, we are going to McKelly, Africa. So we'll just um, imagine in your in your um, heads Ethiopia, right? So in the northern part of Ethiopia, you have the city of McKelly. Now um, McKelly has a population of about 323,000 people. It's in the semi-arid highlands where droughts and water security are common. McKelly is a political, is a economic. It's an educational and a cultural hub for that, for that area. It's a very important city. Um, and it is also a hub for international and humanitarian activity, um, which is at the center of SDG activity. So from here, we're going to take a look at open source global data, open source local data, challenges, and also some, like, some of the conclusions that we've come up with. So this is what this city looks like in OSM. Unfortunately, we don't have the big country map, but um, this is McKelly as the data appears this month in OSM. And if you take a look at um, if you take a look at the boundary. We're going to talk about the boundary a little later. So this <coughs> dotted line is the boundary, right? You see that? When considering scale. OSM occupies a very interesting space in the global local spectrum because you have locally and globally derived data, but it's about a specific place in time. And so is that global data, is that local data? And um, that's something that I'm sure all of you grapple with. The global human settlement layer, which um, Melinda referred to, um, is an open global data set which does help us do those change detection analysis maps. Although there are four periods that are available, I hope to only show you three here. Let's see if that animation happens, and it is. Um, so I'm only showing change detection analysis. Um, it's basically how, how the city changes over time. And um, you saw some of our products with, with that in Melinda's presentation. So for secondary cities, it also shows us where we need to have map, and it provides us a suite of maps to take back to the communities to verify data analysis results. And here's 2014. So you can see the global picture, and we do this on a local scale with the global data. This is GHSL overlaid in OSM. We usually overlay it with a high-res imagery, and this is kind of the first stab that trying to really combine that local and those local and global data sets. With the administrative um, districts that you see we got from the municipality. You can see the built up areas in the center. So this is what it looks like over OSM. So it's a little strange, there's some holes, right? Based on our analysis, the, the GHSL is generally under predicting for our secondary cities. But in McKelly, it's significant under prediction. And so we, what we found is that we need, um, we need verified remote sense data. We need local knowledge. We need local data collection. We need all of you to add to this, to add to, our, um, to these global data sets, to tell the whole story. So let's take a look at the efforts to respond to the SDGs. CPI, the City Prosperity Initiative, uh, measures city prosperity in six dimensions. Productivity, infrastructure, quality of life, equity, environmental sustainability, and governance and legislation. These intersect with sustainable development goal targets that I mentioned earlier. Um, and there are, out of the many cities, hundreds of cities that CPI is looking at, they are there are three countries in which secondary cities have a city, and that's Ecuador, Colombia, and of course Ethiopia. And this is what they're doing in Ethiopia, in McKelly, for example. They're measuring street connectivity, the width, length, and number of intersections, and that includes street density, and it includes intersection density. So street density, 
length of street network per square kilometer and intersection de density, the compactness and walkability, as well as open space. And this is all of the data that you guys are collecting that can contribute to, these, um, to the effort of collecting data for secondary cities. Here, this is a study published um, by actually one of our partners in McKelly. Um, he is one of the authors, co-author. They conducted a, sim a similar study to that of the change detection analysis and looking at land use and land cover over time, over four periods but distinct from the GHSL. So again, there's a variation of what, um, is what the goal is for GHSL. Their aim is to better understand urban expansion over time and predict urban growth um, into the future. Despite the relevance of the study, it was, it was conducted outside of the purview of the Sustainable Development Goals. So what we're hoping to do is connect them with the resources for the SDGs so that we can conduct these calculations for land consumption and contribute to SDGs, especially with regards to these secondary cities. And we hope to be doing this for a number of our cities. So looking at open source data, this is McKelly and OSM with the local authoritative administrative boundary layer. Um, and so as you can see from the layer that I pointed out in OSM earlier, the city has expanded, and, but the layer has not been updated in OSM, something that's pretty easy to do. This is OSM data for McKelly. There are 3,144 features here. I clicked on a building that has been mapped in the middle of that circle, the circle right here, but there's no attribute information on that building. So I overlaid our, the workshop data that was collected locally in the workshop for um, McKelly and found that this actual building is, a, that the building in the bright green is a primary school. You can see um, that there's irrigation land here, there's a market space here, there's this big open space here. Um, and so we're starting to get a little bit more information about what's going on in the center. And you can see overlaid with the GHSL, there's a lot of gaps, as I mentioned. Um, but there's a story here to tell that we wouldn't have known otherwise without that locally collected data, without the global data um, sets together. So, and this is where you guys come in. In order to, to conduct the SDG calculations, we need data. We need population data. And that the population data is highly unreliable and extremely variable. We need data on streets, but not just streets, we need in public spaces. And I know that the focus, a lot of the focus has been on buildings and collecting data about buildings, what kinds of buildings and who's in those buildings. But we need that, that open space as well. And what kind of open space? Is it green? Is it, is it paved over? Is it public? Is it private? We need administrative um, boundaries, layers, um, both current and historical, and we need satellite imagery. And we can get that satellite imagery as, as open source. So uh, looking at some of the challenges, there are many, and these are just a few of them. <laughs> this is not a comprehensive list of challenges. Um, there's no consistent definition of cities across the world. There is no consistent definition of cities across the world. So what is a city in India is different than a city in Nepal, which is different than a city in Bangladesh, which is different. You're getting my point, right? There is no consistent definition of cities. And so when we talk about cities, we have to be precise. We have to be clear. And we have to, we have to talk about population. But that population data is difficult to find. It's difficult to capture cities with negative or zero um, population growth. We have 10 cities in six different languages. So that's nothing compared to the, obviously the languages in India, as was discussed earlier. But it is difficult to share that data, right, across the different cities in terms of trying to get um, both the information and the training out to, the, um, to everyone. And then, of course, it's difficult to find the before and after maps, although we just saw one um, this morning. Um, which was really interesting. But it's not just about the before and after maps, it's the lessons learned. What have we learned from the before and after maps? What can we do differently in the future? 
We will continue to work on data integration um, our cities with, our, with and for our cities, collecting data from multiple sources and multiple methods, as Melinda mentioned already. As you see in the case of McKelly, there isn't one source of data that tells the whole story. There isn't one method that we can use in order to capture that story. We will continue to use new tools and technologies that are emerging as, as developers even here are in development, currently develop, in development and will be coming out. Um, and we will try to um, create interesting new products and visualizations and um, use new geospatial data platforms. And we will continue to work towards more urban sustainability at a local scale through partnerships using but also at that global scale. And so, instead of thinking of it as top down, bottom up, think about it as lateral, <laughs> even though there is that scale. And that includes, of course, all of you for the sustainability of, of your cities, of secondary, whether you live in a secondary city or not, and um, to contribute towards the SDGs. So these are my references and um, data sources, again, not exhaustive, but, um, and also based on the partnerships, and how do you reference partnerships, right? Um, and we, I want to thank you very much for your time, and here's my email address to contact me. And this is a picture of, of Gaurav, who came to Fort Collins and, um, of our, with our team in CSU. Thank you.